Hey there, everybody. I hope everyone's finding ways to stay safe and healthy during these unprecedented times. Uh, I've been spending a fair amount of time tying flies and uh, sampling wonderful craft beers. So the fly I'm going to tie for you today is my Stoutly Emerger. Uh, as you can see, it's kind of a clink hammer style. Um, there's a trailing shuck and then kind of a quill bodied uh, parachute style fly there as well. Uh, the materials you're going to require are shown here. We'll start out by mashing down the barb on this hook. Uh, the hook, incidentally, uh, is a size 12 a curved nymph hook uh, with light wire. Uh, you can tie this on heavy wire, but there's not a lot to keep this thing afloat, so the lighter it can be, the better. I'm going to be using 70 denier olive thread, and we'll get our thread base started. Make sure you coat the hook really, really well. It helps to uh, get all the materials to really stay down on this uh, you know, two-part fly. work our way back make sure that you run the thread clear down and well into the bend of the hook there's a lot of parts to this fly and so you need all of the length of the hook that you can possibly use all right, so we'll snip off our tag end and then we will be using our first material which is the tail for the trailing shuck uh, we have to adjust the hook a little bit here just to make sure that we can tie it on effectively so we'll just adjust it so I can get at that back end and the material we use for the tail of the trailing shuck is going to be mallard flank I usually take off you know five or six uh, of the barbs make sure you get them fairly aligned and then let the thread torque take it over onto the top of the hook and then adjust the length um, as you know according to your own tastes and of course this is not a fly where I tie down the entire length of the uh, of the feather I cut it off trying to save weight on the fly next material that comes in is the larva lace and I either use clear or olive in this case I'm using olive and again, we don't want to have too much extra on there because it's extra weight. You want to tie it back as close to the mallard flank as you possibly can. So you can see I don't have a lot of tag end here once I finally get it on. Now, the other part that's difficult on this fly is getting the taper correct. Uh, so you have to be really careful here about um, putting down a lot of thread in order to create a smooth taper between that piece of larva lace and the rest of the fly. And so that's what I'm doing here. Now, this fly is my picky fish fly. When they're not taking anything else, this is what I use. Um, you know, if I got just a big pool and I've drifted basically everything I can think of through it, uh, I'll tie one of these on and oftentimes just that little bit of fly that's hanging down below the surface uh, is just enough to get them going. Right, so we want to lay the wraps down, touching wraps of the larva lace. So you got three here. I usually do between five and six. Sorry, got my fingers in the way here. I think this ended up being seven wraps. But who's counting? All right, so we're going to secure that down. And make sure I get it secured down really, really tightly, because, again, I want to be able to um, taper this fairly well. Um, this part here is also going to help the tails of the emerging fly to stand up, because I find that this fly floats not only on the hackles, but also on the tails. And I use horsetail for the tails. You can use micro fibbits or whatever you have. But. All right, so here's our tail material. As I said, I use horsetail. So we'll do the near side. That's to you, near side to you first. And tie that down. The thing I like about the horsetail is it's got this natural curve to it. Length is, again, your personal preference. I don't make the tails all that long on these flies. And work our way back here and tie in the other side. All 
There we go. I'm kind of picky about the tails kind of being level. And cut those off so they're the same length. All right, now we're going to put in the post, and for that we use this white foam. You can use sheet foam. Basically what I've got here is kind of pre-cut strips of it. Obviously you could also use Antron or you know, whatever whatever material you like to use for your posts. I like to use the foam just because you know, a little extra flotation. It's nice and white and visible. And I make sure that I really cut this to a taper. So you can see that's what I'm doing here, cutting it to a point. Um, again, I want, don't want, I want to have that nice taper coming up from the tails, and uh, that's the way I do it because otherwise the body can get pretty fat pretty quickly. And you see, I don't put that all the way back to the tails. You'll see it better here once I move my big fingers out of the way. And then I secure it down really hard. Again, this helps me get that taper from tail to thorax. And I make sure I cover up as much of the white as possible, even though I'm going to be tying on the, the peacock quill here in a minute. Okay, then we're going to pull that back and make a thread dam in front of the post material. So I put lots underneath there to get it to stand up straight, and then I usually give it a few wraps around the uh, pair of post. Now you can see it's standing up pretty well now. And put a few more wraps around, and that helps it to really stand up. Now obviously I'll trim a little bit off of that later. I would never leave the parachute post that tall. Now we're going to tie in the body material, which is my chemically stripped peacock quill. Obviously, you can use synthetic quill here as well. I actually just saw some of those online. I think I might try them out. Um, but this is chemically stripped using a, a bath of bleach and then a bath of baking soda. And then I treat them afterwards with just some dollar store hair conditioner because I find that helps keep them kind of flexible so they don't break. All right, so I tie it in on the near side, near to me this time. And then run the thread up to the parapost. And then I put it in my holder, my bobbin holder, because I find when I'm using the peacock quill, anything that I bump or anything like that can cause the quill to break. Okay, so we start out with touching wraps, and then I start to space it a little bit more to get that look of segmentation. And again, with this stuff, you have to be so careful. Stripped peacock quill is so delicate. I'm assuming that's the benefit of the synthetic stuff, but like I say, I haven't tried it yet. Okay, and I go very, very close up, touching the parapost, then I actually go past it. Like so, uh, and I tie it down there. Alright, so now that we're done with that, we'll cut it off. Be careful not to snip your thread here. Okay, next material okay, is our UV clear fly finish. Um, this is the Loon UV stuff, and I put it over all of the quill here. It really makes it pop, and of course protects it because, um, again, it's a fragile material. If you don't coat it with this stuff, I find that after one fish, maybe two, it's just thrashed and uh, the fly is useless after that so this uh, gives it a little bit more durability but I find also really magnifies those quills and the segmentation. All right, we'll get the torch out here and give it a shot with the torch right after I snipped that little thing up it was bugging me. Obviously I've sped this up a lot because um, I shoot it with the torch for a long time. 
All right, next material is our hackle. I tie this either with olive, which is what I use most of the time, sometimes grizzly, but most of the time I use olive because I find this is usually imitating an emerging blue wing olive. And of course we want to give it its uh, brush cut here. Sorry, I kind of got out of frame here. All right, so the brush cut looks like that. That just helps the thread to catch the hackle feather. I tie it down a little bit in front of the post and then obviously up the post. Okay, so you can see here about how far up the post I go. Obviously you can go further up the post if you really like stacked tackle. And then I'm going to go right here to the head of the fly, push the post back, there we go, standing up nice. Now I'm going to put a little bit more of the uh, UV cure on the post. I just find that helps me to, uh, once I have the hackle wrapped, I can give it a shot with the torch and it kind of stays there. Um, because I really have a hard time. It's one of those things I struggle with as a fly tire uh, to get that hackle tied down properly after. So I find that this helps. It's cheating, I know. All right, so we got one wrap, two, three, four, that's usually good enough. Now I'm gonna give it a shot with the torch here just to kind of help it stay on before I tie it on. And again, for me, this is the hardest part. I always find that I trap some of those hackle fibers with my thread and it's kind of a pain in the neck, but. All right, so I'm gonna try and stay underneath, pull up a little bit, there we go. Eh, I didn't trap too many. There's one or two there right in front of you. That's not too, too bad. Okay, so hackle fiber is secure, and I didn't have to wrap too many times because I already had it secured with the uh, UV cure. Snip it off close. All right, and then I always finish these flies with my half hitch tool. Um, that way, again, I'm not trapping a bunch of those parachute fibers. Just find that that's the smarter way to do it. Trying to whip finish underneath those parachute flies this is just a pain in the neck all right so a couple half hitches here using the half hitch tool couple three four whatever all right then we'll snip it off close and we'll call this fly done So there you have it. You can see kind of a, again, a clink hammer style uh, type of fly. I'm just going to cut the parachute post off here in a second. It's a little bit tall. Obviously, I don't want it that tall, but we have a clink hammer style fly, trailing shuck behind. That's the part that hangs below the water. And then, you know, emerging insect look above that. Uh, and it seems to float pretty well on both the tails and the hackles. I usually put some uh, floatant on both the tails and the hackle. So thanks for watching everybody. If you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing, leave a like, share it with your friends. Uh, you can follow me on social media, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, at Midlife Flysis. This summer, hopefully all this quarantine stuff will be over and uh, I'll be able to do some guided trips. So if you're interested in uh, guided walk and wade fly fishing trips in Southern Alberta, please get a hold of me. I've got a website, link in the description, um, and we can look at uh, maybe taking you out and getting into some fish. Thanks for watching, everybody. Thailands.